Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 314. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today are all of the action figures that I purchased in the first quarter of 2024. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, uh, I've been doing it for like five years now, and every year I post a best of the year video where I go through all the action figures I bought in that given year and I kind of whittle it down to my top 20. So in the past couple of years, I've gotten so many action figures, I found it really daunting to uh, get all my action figures together and do the eliminations in the, uh, the final week of the year, kind of around the holidays. I've got other things going on. So uh, last year was the first year I decided to make things a little bit easier on myself, and I would do the eliminations quarterly. So what I've got here are all the figures I bought January, February, March of 2024. Um, it's about 90 figures or so. I am going to, first I'm going to take out any figure that doesn't qualify. To qualify for my toy of the year list, it has to be a figure that was released in this calendar year, and I have to have acquired it in this calendar year. So I'm going to eliminate all the toys that don't qualify, and then I'm going to whittle down all the qualifying toys until I get down to a nice reasonable number. So let's say... 10, 15, maybe 20. And once I get down to those few figures, those ones will advance uh, to the next quarter. And uh, so, yeah, after each quarter, I will have, you know, 15 to 20 figures from each quarter. And it'll be a lot easier at the end of the year to just choose from those figures who have already advanced. So uh, I've got all the figures I purchased, all 90 of them, all on my desk here beside me. So I'm going to spin things around here and we're going to start doing some eliminations right now. So here are all the action figures that I purchased this first quarter of 2024. And you can see they come right out to the edge of my desk. And I couldn't even fit them all in my normal little workspace. Um, so the first figures I'm going to show you are going to be my first eliminations. Now, there's actually a lot of figures that I bought in this first quarter that are carryovers from previous years. So those figures are going to be automatically eliminated. If the figure was not released in 2024, it is not a contender for my best of 2024. So first up, we're going to look at these Power Ranger figures. I am not a Power Rangers fan, but these figures were at the dollar store for five bucks each. And it seemed like a pretty good deal. So why not grab these stupid Power Rangers? Um, they're not very articulated. They kind of feel like dollar store toys. They're pretty junky. Um, but they're fun, like they're big, chunky toys. But anyway, I'm pretty sure they were not initially released this year. They're probably a couple of years old, the fact that they're starting to show up at dollar stores now. So uh, those guys there are all eliminated. None of, There's seven of them in total, and none of them are going to count. And then if we come over here to the rest of these figures, there are some really nice ones up front here. Most of them were released maybe just last year. I've got a couple of really old ones. For example, this guy here, this is a, uh, a blue mini figure from McFarlane's yellow submarine action figure line that's probably about 20 years old, uh, but my brother got me these for my birthday in January. So there's five of these figures in here. They obviously are not going to count for 2024, so they will all be eliminated. This is a, another birthday present I got. This is a little Greedo. It's from the Soda series from Funko. My buddy Guy bought that for me. It was not released this year, so that does not count. This Shogun Godzilla from Super 7 does not count. It's an older release that I just picked up recently. Mandarin Spawn from McFarland Toys. He's pretty cool. He probably wouldn't be a contender anyway, but that's an older figure that I just picked up. Uh, Future Ant-Man. I think this is actually a pretty lame figure, but he was only $5.00. So I picked him up as well, but both of them are eliminated. Now I've got two big DC figures here. This is the Anti-Monitor from the comic books, and this is Darkseid from uh, the Justice League movie. Now both of them are pretty cool in their own right. Um, I don't think Darkseid would have stood a chance really to make my best of the year, but Anti-Monitor might have just because he's such a, a weird character who's never had an action figure before as far as I know. But uh, unfortunately, I did not get him when he was released last year. So these were kind of late purchases for me. So both of those guys are going to have to be eliminated. This here is a first appearance Spider-Man. 
from the Marvel Legends like retro three and three quarter inch figures. I think this figure was released a year, maybe two years ago. I got it at the dollar store for five bucks. Another good deal, but not toy of the year. Um, this was a three pack of Target exclusives. It's from Masters of the Universe slash Sunman. My brother, who lives in Miami, picked up this three pack for me. Uh, I think in November or December, and he brought it to me in January when he came home to visit. They're cool figures. I like them all. I don't think any of them would have advanced anyway, because I have no nostalgic attachment to any of these characters. So that is Kikdo, Holographo, and Zapman. Um, they don't count anyway, because they were released in a previous year. But uh, yeah, they're not really my favorites anyway. Uh, here's a couple of figures I just recently got. This is the Wolfman and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. They look like Super 7 reaction figures, but they are actually Burger King toys from the late 90s. Uh, and I acquired those from a neighbor recently. Uh, but yeah, they obviously don't count because those toys are super old. Here is a Jet Jaguar, the firefighter version. This is from Super 7's reaction line. Uh, that does not count. This was a blind box figure that was released pretty late last year. But I did not get him until recently, so he's going to be eliminated. This four-headed dog thing, that's another one from the Beatles Yellow Submarine line, so that's gone. We've got a couple of Marvel Legends here. This is Ironheart. Um, she was from the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie from, I think, two years ago. Um, but I got this figure for my birthday. It's a nice figure, but does not count. This Hawkeye figure was released pretty late last year, um, but I was actually going to pass on it because I already had another Hawkeye figure, and this guy was a little bit more expensive because he comes with this Sky Cycle, and, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool little vehicle. Um, anyway, I wasn't going to get him, but then I saw him on a few people's best of the year list last year, so when I saw him go on sale early this year, I felt like I needed to pick him up, and he is pretty cool. He's a lot better than my previous Hawkeye, but uh, he doesn't qualify for Toy of the Year, so he's got to go. These three weirdos here are the last three yellow submarine figures that my brother got me for my birthday. So I'll have to pull all of them out of there. I've got a couple of Marvel Legends. This Thor just fell over and hopefully he doesn't take a bunch of other guys down with him. But this is from the Thor Love and Thunder movie. I did not buy the figure when it came out, but I got him pretty cheap recently. So it's a nice figure. Uh, you know, I was happy to pick him up for sale, but uh, he was not released this year. So he's got to go. Similarly, I have uh, Gore. So this was the Christian Bale character. He was the villain in that same movie. He's got to go. And then I've got two Eternals. So that movie came out, in, I think, 2021. So I bought some of the figures, um, but some of the other ones I felt I could wait on. So this one here and this one here. So yeah, they're both fine, but they're not great figures. They never would have stood a chance anyway. But uh, yeah, let's get rid of all those guys. Now, up front here, I've got a few Indiana Jones figures from the Indiana Jones Adventure Series from Hasbro. I, like, I love the Indiana Jones movies, and I really like these figures. But I wasn't convinced to spend like $30 to $40 on each of these figures when they were released last year. So I bought the regular Indiana Jones, and I bought some of the other characters, but I felt I could pass on this Indiana Jones and like his desert outfit and some of his buddies like Marcus Brody and Sala. However, this year I was able to find them for sale, so I picked them all up, and they're all nice in their own way, but uh, they don't count for Toy of the Year. And over here I've got a couple of his villains. So this is Balak and Elsa, I think. And they're both cool figures. I'm glad I was able to pick them up for a bit of a discount this year. But uh, yeah, none of them were released in 2024, so they're all going to go. Now this is a nice figure here. This is Grimsword from NECA's Dungeons & Dragons figures, uh, based on the kind of retro 80s toys. It's a really cool design. He's a really big, very detailed figure, but uh, he was released last year, so uh, he's got to go. He does not qualify for this video. All right, we're almost done with the old stuff that doesn't qualify. This here is Sin. This is a Spawn figure that was released last year. I did not pick him up until this year when I got him for sale. And now I have three of NECA's Universal Monster figures. I've got the Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Frankenstein. These are the black and white editions of those two. These are all really nice figures. 
I love the Universal Monsters, and I think NECA really knocked it out of the park with these guys. Uh, last year, their Dracula figure ranked very high on my list. Um, I think any of these figures would be list-worthy um, had I picked them up last year. But these are all 2023 releases. Frankenstein might even be 2022. So uh, I've got to eliminate all of them. Now you'll see I've got a bunch of Godzilla reaction figures in here. Most of these will qualify. I doubt too many of them will make it very far. But these two here on the end, these were blind box figures that were released late in 2023. Um, they were part of the same wave as the Firefighter Jet Jaguar. So yeah, those two have to go. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of all of those figures, which did not qualify for Toy of the Year, I'm left with, I think, approximately 45 figures that I just counted. So these were all figures that I got this year that were released this year. Now they're, you know, some of them are a little debatable, um, like Ripper here from G.I. Joe. I know some people got him late in 2023, and he even made some other people's best of the year list last year. Um, same as this whole wave of Marvel Legends with Vision and uh, Chris Star here. Chris Star was on a bunch of top 10 lists last year. But um, for me, these figures, I could not have got them any earlier than 2024. Um, I had them on pre-order, and as soon as the pre-orders came in, they shipped, and I got them when I got them, which was about two weeks into January. So that's great that some people were able to get their hands on them a little bit early. So you could argue that those figures shouldn't qualify. But for me, basically my rule is if they were not available to me in my area until this year, then they would qualify. So uh, yeah, here we go. So now it's just a matter of whittling these down to a reasonable number um, that I can advance to be contenders at the end of the year. So basically every quarter I hope to whittle down to maybe about 15 figures which would leave me with uh, like 60 figures to whittle down from for my final video of the year. Um, but that's not a hard and fast rule. If I have 20 amazing figures right now, then 20 will go through. I don't think that's going to be the case with this quarter. This quarter kind of started slow. I got a lot of cool figures, but as you saw, many of them were released from prior years. So uh, yeah, I don't think I have a ton of contenders here. Um, there are a few incredible figures that I know will go through. Um, so let's start up front with the, the smaller figures, which are usually some of Super 7's reaction figures. So here I've got the My Chemical Romance figures. So this is all four members of the band um, dressed in their outfits from the album Danger Days, which was a concept album, and they were basically playing characters known as the Fabulous Killjoys. It had kind of a sci-fi storyline to it. Some of these figures are really cool. Um, this one here, not so much. This is Ray from the band. He's, you know, the figure's a little boring. He's got some, some nice deco and stuff on him. But, yeah, this would not be my toy of the year. Now, Mikey, this is actually a really nice figure. I like all the paint deco. I like the design of him. Same as Gerard Way. That's the lead singer of the band. He's my favorite, obviously. And uh, it's a nice figure. Uh, and Frank... He's not too bad either, but this is not a toy of the year for me. So he's going to go. And uh, it's unlikely that an, a reaction figure will advance to the end anyway. But I think if any of them was going to do it, it would actually be Mikey. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Gerard. I'll leave Mikey for the time being. I've got a couple of reaction figures of Godzilla and his pals. So this here is Anguirus. Uh, I was happy to finally get this character as he is one of the more popular monsters. Uh, he's been featured in a number of movies. But uh, this figure, not only is it kind of light on details and all that sort of stuff, but his pose, it's just not a particularly fun pose. It looks like he's kneeling down. He's not really in a fight pose or anything. So I think they could have done better on this guy. So he's definitely not going to go through. Mogira, he's just weird enough that maybe he could survive. I'm going to leave him for now. This is one of many Godzillas. They're making Godzillas for pretty much every different Godzilla movie. So every time his look changed ever so slightly, we get a new figure. This guy is fine, but I already have so many reaction figure Godzillas. He's just not different enough. He doesn't really stand out from the pack. So, uh, so yeah, he's going to go. 
Um, next up, we've got Baragon. So similar to Anguirus, this is another one of Godzilla's kind of one of the other kaiju that appears in the movies. Um, he's not really one of my favorites, and this figure is kind of one of the less detailed ones, I feel. And he, he's cute with that big smile, but he's uh, he doesn't look particularly menacing. This guy is not going to go through. Now, this is Godzilla's skeleton, which, you know, is kind of a weird action figure, but I love it. Um, you know, it might not be that much fun to play with, a dead Godzilla, but that's going to stick around for a little while, so keep him here. Now, I've got three of these Godzillas here now. I already eliminated the Shogun Godzilla that was released a couple of years ago that I just acquired. These are all repaints um, from of that figure. They were in the latest wave of blind box figures. And I really like this mold, even though it's silly and does not really look like Godzilla. But, uh, yeah. So this is the same mold that I already have two or three times in my collection. It's just in new colors. The uh, They're all nice. I, I like the black one. I like the green glittery one. But they don't really stand a chance. I doubt this amber colored one does either, but I'm going to hold on to him for a minute because I really do like this yellow figure. It just brings me joy. I doubt he'll last, but we'll keep him around. Um, here I've got a figure. This is not actually a reaction figure. This is Suko. He is from the new Godzilla King Kong movie that just came out. So if you've seen it, you're probably in love with this character like I am. I thought he was great in the movie. The likeness on this could be better, but uh, yeah, this is kind of a cheap little retail figure from Playmates. He's not like collector grade like most of the other figures I have up here. And it's pretty well articulated. It's a nice figure and all, but uh, it's not Toy of the Year material for me. So he's going to go. And he actually came packaged with this guy, which is another creature from the movie. He's not really a character so much. He's just one of the background creatures. It's a fun little figure, but it is not Toy of the Year. I've got a few superpowers figures from McFarlane Toys over here. And I like all these guys quite a bit. They're all really nice. You know, Sinestro looks really great in his classic outfit. But superpowers, like reaction figures, are just a little too simple. Um, so he's great. I really enjoy him, but he's not Toy of the Year. Similarly for Hal Jordan, it was nice to add him to my ranks, but he's not going to go. This gold Batman is a lot of fun, and it makes me nostalgic for a toy that uh, I actually didn't even own this toy, but my little brother did when he was a kid. So I had this gold Batman figure floating around my house when I was young, and when I saw this new version, you know, it just kind of, yeah, made me feel nostalgic. I like it, but it's not toy of the year. It's just a repaint of a figure I already have. Having said that, I've got this Superman over here, and I don't know what it is about this Superman mold, but I love it. And I've got this figure twice over in two different outfits, and both times it almost made my list. And I'm not even really familiar with this outfit. This is like a, an older evil version of Superman. You can see he's got some gray hair at his temples and this outfit. I, I don't really know it. But I think it looks really cool. I really like that outfit. And the previous two Superman figures did not make my list. But they made it pretty far along in the process. And I think I'm going to let this guy duke it out again. I just really love this mold. It's so simple. You know, not, not much detail on that face sculpt or anything. But I just, I love it. All right. So I think that's all the little guys that we've taken into consideration. So now we can get into some of the bigger figures. Six inch and above. So, got quite a bit of variety in here. Now, let's see. Maybe we'll start with Masters of the Universe. So I've got two of these Masters of the Universe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle mashup figures. So this is Mutated He-Man. So he's cast in a translucent purple plastic. He's got these green veins, you know, running down his body and stuff. He's cool. He's something that's kind of neat and different. But... It's not a uh, you know look that I have any particular attachment to. It's something new they tried, and I appreciate them doing something new, but I, I, I'd rather a regular He-Man than this kind of goofy, muta mutated He-Man. So, yeah, this guy is going to go. And similarly, I have a mutated Ram-Man. I can move Ripper out of the way. 
So this here, he is also translucent purple. And he's got those green veins. He's got the horns. So Ram Man in the regular Master of the Universe is just a, a regular guy that rams. But in this mashup property, he's an actual ram or like a goat man. With goat feet and everything. And he's fun, like He-Man, but it's not a look that I have any particular attachment to. So yeah, he's going to go. So next up, I've got four of the cartoon collection figures from Mattel. So this line has kind of replaced their Origins line. So they're done in that kind of retro 80s toy style, but unlike the toys we had when we were kids, these ones are actually designed to match up with the designs from the 80s Filmation cartoon. And they're pretty great because I loved both the cartoon and the toys. I don't know if I could pick one look over the other, but it's nice to have the option to have both. So I already have all these characters in my collection from the Origins line based on the vintage toys. And now these ones are compatible figures in the cartoon style. Uh, they're great. However, some of their thunder has been stolen by the fact that Super 7, a couple of years ago, released Filmation style figures. And I think Filmation's, or I think Super 7's were better for the most part. Their Skeletor was definitely better than this one. So uh, yeah, I'll take my other Skeletor over this guy. They did a nice trap jaw. I actually did not get their trap jaw, so it's nice to get this one. Um, I guess this is probably cartoon accurate, but his jaw just seems really, really big compared to every other version of this character I have in my collection. And I find it a little off-putting. It looks a little weird. He's got kind of this like Jay Leno chin or something. I don't remember it being that big in the cartoon. I'll trust that that's accurate, but it's enough for me to give the figure the boot. And then we've got Man-at-Arms. This is a really nice Man-at-Arms. But I've got so many Man-at-Arms. This guy just doesn't really excite me. I don't know. So I'm going to get rid of him too. So that leaves Tila. Now, I don't know if she'll make it through, but I think this is a really nice Tila. And this, I think, trumps the one that uh, Super 7 had done previously. Super 7 kind of screwed up their Tila a little bit, in my opinion. So I think Mattel has done a nicer job. She looks really good. She matches the animation model quite well. So I think I'll let her stick around for a little while longer. Now there is one other Masters of the Universe character in here, I believe, which is Eva Lynn. So she is from like the Masterverse line, which is Mattel's new six inch line of figures. And I'm not really buying that line. I'm trying to avoid it. But this one I had to pick up because this is Evil Lynn based on her look from the live action movie from 1987, I want to say. And I've always wanted figures based on that movie. A couple of years ago, Super 7 gave us uh, movie versions of He-Man and Skeletor and a couple other characters. But we were missing some key characters, Evil Lynn being one of them. So when I saw that Mattel was going to fill that hole in my collection, I eagerly pre-ordered this figure. And it's it's fine. It does the job pretty well, but it doesn't match up with my other movie figures perfectly. She's a little, the scale's a little bit off. Just the proportions are a little bit off. I don't know about the face. Like, the face is okay, but she looks a little manly. Uh, I don't really like this pink. Like, maybe that's screen accurate, but in the movies it was a lot darker. and It was a lot more shadowy. I don't know. It looks, it looks too girly here. Anyway, it's it's just not a toy to your figure for me, so Evelyn's going to go. So next up, we've got some Action Force figures from Valiverse. And uh, all these figures are really nice. He released a new wave of figures not too long ago. I did not buy the full wave. I kind of cherry-picked my favorites. I went with these four. None of them are unique characters. These are all troopers that I can use to kind of just expand my Action Force army. So here we have the Arctic and the Desert version of the Steel Brigade. So the figures are identical. They just have different paint jobs. They're both really nice, but I already have the Steel Brigade figure a couple of times over. And uh, as much as I like it, enough to ex you know buy these repaints, it just doesn't really excite me anymore as far as the mold and everything goes. So these guys are not going to be toy of the year, so they can go. Now this here is a kind of a basic trooper, which they have released... Several times in the past in a variety of colors, 
I already have this figure in blue and black and gray, and there's also a green one that I think I passed on. There might even be other colors. Um, because again, it just got a little, after a while, it was a little played out, and I, I really didn't feel like I needed this character in every single color. But then this Arctic one came out, and they added a new head with the goggles, and it just added some new life to it. I think the goggles look great. I love this figure. I love the paint job with that kind of minty green. It's really nice. But uh, again, I just don't think it's going to be toy of the year. However, the last candidate here, this is also just a repaint of another toy we've already got, the Swarm Trooper. This is, uh, I think they call this guy the Swarm Tracer. And it's just a glow-in-the-dark version of the Swarm Trooper. So he's got this backpack with kind of retractable wings. Uh, he glows really nice. But what the best thing about this figure is that he's got three alternate heads. Um, and this head here, which previously belonged to a character called the Scarab, I like it better than the standard Swarm Trooper head. So if this guy had just came with the standard Swarm Trooper head, I don't think it would have um, advanced. I would have still really liked it. But given the, the fact that they gave me the option to display it how I wanted with one of three heads, and I can display it with the scarab head, it really elevates the figure for me. So yeah, this guy's definitely going to stick around. So I've got some G.I. Joes and some Marvel Legends that we haven't really looked at yet. Now, G.I. Joe is one of my fastest growing collections, but the first quarter was pretty light. I think I have just four G.I. Joe figures in contention here, but uh, there's more on the way. In fact, as I'm filming this, I think it's the 3rd of April, and I got uh, five new G.I. Joe figures just today. I haven't opened them yet, and because it's April, they would count for the second quarter. Um, so yeah, I didn't need to open them for this video, but there's some really nice ones coming. So yeah, lots more G.I. Joes later this year. But for now, we've got Ripper, who I really like, and I think I can keep him into the next round. Um, or at least he's sticking around. It's a really nice figure. The only thing that makes me kind of want to eliminate him is the fact that, you know, so many people had him last year and put him on their list last year. So he, you know, if he makes it all the way to my best of the year list this coming December, he's going to feel pretty old to some people. But uh, he is really nice. He's got a nice head sculpt. He's got nice accessories. You know, he was, he was always a character that I really liked. And... You know, there's a current, there's a new G.I. Joe comic book that just started coming out, and Ripper's been featured pretty prominently, so it's really nice to see the character again uh, in a way that he was never really portrayed before, which really elevates this figure as well. It's fun to have a figure of a character that you're currently reading about in the comic books and everything, so yeah, I think Ripper's going to stick around. Then we've got Clutch. Now, Clutch, this is a character, he's, uh, you know, he's kind of plain. He's just, a, you know, plain green. He's not one of the most interesting characters. But this is one of the original 13 G.I. Joe members that came out in 1982. I started collecting Joes in 1982, so I do have a fondness for these original Joes. Now, Clutch was one of the figures that my brother owned, so I don't have quite the same attachment to him as I would for characters that I own personally. But uh, I think Clutch is going to stick around because I do consider characters that have vehicles as their accessories. And if they have a really great accessory, that could kind of bump them up like Hawkeye with his little sky cycle there. He didn't count for this year, but the sky cycle really kind of elevated uh, Hawkeye. It gave him something more. And Breaker, or not Breaker, Clutch here. Clutch came with the Vamp Jeep, which is a pretty incredible vehicle. So if you consider that an accessory of his, that definitely kind of makes him feel a lot more substantial than maybe the figure looks on its own. So I think he's going to stick around. Uh, we'll talk about those other two in a minute. Uh, let's look at some of these Marvel Legends. So this here is the Executioner. I was excited to get this guy because, as far as I know, this guy's never had a figure before. I'm not really a big X-Men fan. This guy has come out to coincide with the new X-Men 97 cartoon. And I did watch the first couple episodes. It was neat to see this guy in animation. But uh, the figure, I don't know. He seems a little too short. And he's not really, if I hold him up to other six inch figures, he's not particularly short, but he, he looks it. I feel he should be bigger. And I don't know, this animation style, he just doesn't quite blend in with some of the other figures in my collection. Like most of my, 
Marvel Legends are comic book style and they're not this sleek and simple. Like these animation figures kind of lack some of the detail. Um, and I don't know, Executioner is just not a figure that has a whole lot of personality that I care about. So cool figure, glad I got him, but he is not going to be a toy of the year for me. Um, this Namor, <laughs> I think it sucks. Um, maybe it's an objectively okay figure in its construction and everything, but this outfit and this hairdo is not a look I associate with Namor. Uh, I know he had this look for a little while, but I think it's terrible. So I only bought this figure because I wanted to build the figure pieces in order to build the Void, who we'll talk about shortly. So yeah, this Namor, if he was packaged alone with no build the figure pieces, I never would have bought it. So he definitely is not going to advance. And this Vision figure is pretty nice. It might be the nicest Vision figure we've got. I have a few Visions in my collection already. But Vision is not one of my favorite characters. I was content with the Visions that I already have. I wouldn't have bought this figure on its own. I only bought it to get the build the figure parts. So even though it's a decent vision, and like I said, probably the best vision released so far, it's just not going to be a toy of the year for me. Okay, I've shimmy things around so I can take a look at these Marvel Legends. Some of them were kind of tucked in the back. So this here is Namor's cousin, Namorita. And the figure doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. Like she's, her costume is pretty plain. She's just wearing a bathing suit. Um, you know, not much. She doesn't have any accessories as far as like power effects. I think she might have had some alternate hands. Um, so yeah, I could see some people not being very excited about this figure. I happen to love it because I've been a big fan of this character since the 90s when she joined the team, the New Warriors, which was kind of like a teen team of superheroes. Loved that book. Loved her. She was probably my favorite member of the team. And even though this is not the look I really associate with her, um, it's pretty cool. And I'm just super stoked to finally have her on my shelf as an action figure. She has never had one before. So she's definitely a contender for me. Crystar, the Crystal Warrior. This guy, if you're not familiar with him, he is a Marvel character, but he does not show up in Marvel comic books very often. He had a very short-lived series. I think it ran for... I don't know, less than 20 issues back in the 80s, and there was a very short-lived toy line. I have some of the Crystar figures from the 80s in my collection. And just the idea of bringing back this old action figure and including him in Marvel Legends is just really neat, and it's really well done. I love the translucent blue. He's definitely a contender for me. Over here, we've got Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. Now, this is from the same animation line as Executioner. And everything I said about him kind of applies here. Like she's got that sleek kind of animation look and she looks a little out of place with some of my other comic based figures. But like Namorita, I just have a lot of attachment to this character. When I first started collecting comic books in the late 80s, there was a really big crossover event. It was an X-Men event, but it crossed over into Spider-Man and Daredevil and everything like that. She was the big bad of Inferno was the name of the crossover. And uh, I loved Inferno so much. And uh, I've wanted a, an action figure of Goblin Queen for a long, long time. We finally got one. It's not really the look I would have preferred. They've Because uh, in the comic books, she had a much uh, skimpier outfit. But obviously, to put her on the toy shelves, they had to kind of dress her up and give her this full body catsuit. Um, but whatever, I'll take it. I'm just happy to have this character. I think it's a pretty cool figure anyway. This here is Justice, sometimes known as Marvel Boy. He's got kind of a generic superhero suit too. Nothing particularly interesting about him. But like these other two, um, this is just a character that I love. He was a founding member of the New Warriors along with Namorita. And those were the last two characters we needed to complete the set. We already had Night Thrasher and Speedball and Nova. Um, so yeah, getting these two figures was a long time coming. And I love them both. So yeah, they're sticking around. Um, Power Princess. So she's a member of the Squadron Supreme. Um, she is kind of Marvel's knockoff Wonder Woman, which is probably obvious to you. And uh, I really don't have much of an attachment to this character at all. I didn't read any comic books featuring her growing up. I have read a few in more recent years. 
So unlike these characters who got by on nostalgia, this figure is going to get by just on execution. I think it is a beautiful figure, really well done. It's better than any Wonder Woman that I have in my collection. You know, I wish DC could make a Wonder Woman figure this good. Anyway, so yeah, she's sticking around. But yeah, Marvel, so far, it's a pretty clean sweep for Marvel. Now, this here is Jack-O-Lantern. Again, his figure, it's, uh, there's not a whole lot here. It's, I think, probably mostly reused parts. And, uh, you know, I could see some people not being particularly excited about Jack-O-Lantern. He's not a super well-known character. He's one of Spidey's lesser-known villains. But this guy... Again, I love him. He was in some of the earliest comic books I read. I started collecting Spider-Man in the 280s. And uh, right around that time, there was a gang war storyline where Hobgoblin and Hammerhead and Kingpin and Jack-O-Lantern were all at war with one another, fighting for power in the underworld. And Jack-O-Lantern just made a big impression on me. I loved his, his design with that flaming pumpkin. And there have been quite a few jack-o-lantern figures over the year but none of them have uh, have ever captured his classic look from those early issues of amazing spider-man like this one has some of them have given him a different like black outfit some of them have put like a nose on his jack-o-lantern which uh the jack-o-lantern that i want does not have a nose he's wearing this classic green chainmail outfit this figure is uh, exactly what i was looking for so yeah this guy's definitely going on to advance then we've got Tombstone. This is a pretty recent figure. I just got this guy like two weeks ago. Um, this is an awesome figure. They've done lots of Marvel Legends of guys in suits. But I think this is a brand new mold. Because Tombstone's kind of a big guy. So they couldn't reuse like the suit from the Rose or the Chameleon or somebody like that. Anyway, I think this is an awesome figure. It's got a great head sculpt. You know, he's got a great accessory there with his crowbar. And like the suit is just really nice. It's a, uh, I wasn't always a big Tombstone fan, but uh, I've been warming up to him in more recent years. And I think this is a really nicely done figure. So I think he's going to stick around too. And lastly, we've got Hallow's Eve. So this is a brand new character. She was only introduced maybe a year ago. And uh, so she's kind of this Halloween themed villain. She's got different masks that she carries around in her bag. And when she puts on a, a vampire mask, she turns into a vampire. When she puts on a werewolf mask, she turns into a werewolf. So that's her gimmick. Um, I really like this character, even if the comic books that she's appeared in have not been great thus far. I like the concept of her. And I feel that they will eventually do some really good storylines with her. And I think she'll probably be a recurring villain for years to come. And, uh, yeah, I really like this figure. It's really cool to get action figures of characters that are, you know, just appearing in comic books for the first time. You know, it makes the toys and the comic books feel like they're a cohesive uh, thing and that the teams are working together. And, you know, you're reading a new character, you want a toy of it. And sometimes it's really frustrating when you have to wait years and years to get a figure. Um, but, yeah, this came out. You know, the timing on this was great. It's, like objectively it's not a great figure in that you know she's doesn't have much in the way of detail like her gloves and stuff are just painted on like there's no line for her boots to separate the boot from the pants or anything it's like so some of that feels a little lazy they could have done it better but just based on the character alone i think i'm gonna let her stick around for a while so this always happens to me when i do these videos i think i'm making good time and then i realize i've rambled on and now the video is going long so I'm going to have to try and speed things up a little bit here. These are a couple of G.I. Joe classified figures that I haven't talked about yet. These are kind of unique in that in the modern era of G.I. Joe, basically as long as I've been collecting G.I. Joe since 1982, um, G.I. Joe has all been, been about name characters like Snake Eyes and Duke. Um, before my time, back in the 60s, G.I. Joe figures were more about specialties. So it was like Navy soldier, Navy diver, you know, Air Force. And these figures are kind of a nod to those old 60s figures in that these are not unique characters. These are just troopers. Each of them came with two different heads. So you could display them as either an African-American or a white guy. So I went with the white guy head on this guy, black guy head on this one. They came with a ton of accessories. So he's got an optional scuba mask. 
and like he's got guns and knives and flippers and this guy here he's got the ghillie suit which you can remove and he's got all these pouches and all this sort of stuff going on in his vest he's got an optional hood or a helmet like they're really nice i appreciate all the effort that hasbro put into these guys but because they're not named characters they did not appear in the cartoons or the comic books i don't have any attachment to these characters I think the diver would have stood a chance for me just based on the look alone. The thing is, the figure is mostly just a repaint of the torpedo figure we got last year, which made my best of the year list. So I'm loving this figure, but that's just because I love the torpedo figure they already released. This guy doesn't really bring enough new to the table, so uh, I think both of these figures are not going to advance. So there's a handful of figures here that we haven't talked about yet. So first up, let's take a look at as a hazard this is a mythic legions figure from the four horsemen this guy is like a nine inch figure he's from their original line of kind of swords and sorcery this guy here is like a demonic wizard or something he is very very cool great sculpt great paint job great accessories like look at this staff that he comes with anyway he's just super cool i just got him very recently um, but I pre-ordered him like two years ago. So I've been anticipating this guy for a long time. And yeah, he's definitely going to advance to the next round. So part of the reason I haven't touched on him yet is because I knew he was sitting back there and he was a lock. So uh, he's the first official lock of the video. Next up, we have this Godzilla Ultimate figure from Super 7. This is what they call the 1200 degree Godzilla. So this is the melted Godzilla from the movie... Godzilla versus Destroya, when Godzilla kind of heated up from the inside and eventually melted away. So you can see they've got his skin melting. You can see bones. He's got one fully exposed bone arm here. He's cast in this translucent orange, and all of his little fins are melting away. He had an optional head, which had half of the flesh on it. I went with the fully, uh, fully skeleton head. Although both were pretty good, but I like that this one has an articulated jaw. Anyway, I love this figure. It's very unique amongst my sea of Godzilla figures. So this guy is definitely going through. This guy is a, a lock for sure. Now this here is the Void. This is the Build-A-Figure. So I had to buy Namor and Vision and all these other guys to get all the parts to build this big crazy guy. So he's casting this translucent purple with this kind of black wash over him he's got these crazy tentacles and he's got these like tentacles coming out of his head he is a really neat looking figure he's got these like crab legs on his torso he's just pretty gross and cool um i don't know if he's a toy of the year for me though like i know nothing about the void i've read comic books with him in it but he didn't even look like this when i read those comic books i think he was more of just like a a cloud with not really a clear like form so i'm not sure which comic book he appeared in where he took this appearance it's cool but i might have to come back to him all right the last two figures that we have not addressed this is destroya from super 7's ultimate godzilla line he came in the same wave as the melted godzilla this guy is huge he's got a ton of detail he had some cool accessories, including an alternate head and three little like offspring. He looks great. He's big. He's chunky. He's, uh, he's awesome. So I knew both these figures were contenders for my toy of the year as soon as I got them. I love them both. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about him. He's incredible. Uh, and then lastly, we've got another Marvel Legend. He was kind of tucked away in the corner because he takes up a lot of room with his big old wings. But this here is Angel. So he's an X-Men character. We have had a couple Angel figures in the past, but it's been several years, and I have been eagerly anticipating a new version of Angel. I'm glad they went with this outfit. He's had many over the years, and I think this is probably his best. And uh, yeah, he came with an alternate head, some alternate hands. His wings are awesome. They, uh, they're multi multiple parts. I think there's three parts to each wing, so they can spread out really wide. Uh, yeah, he's just really nice value for what you get. And, uh, yeah, he's a lock too. 
So we're going to say that whole back row there. So as a Hazard, Godzilla, Destroya, Angel, those guys are all locks. And now I got to sort through all these rest, all the rest of all these guys. So I believe I have 22 figures still on the table here. And like I said, I don't really have a specific number I'm trying to get down to, but uh, 15 is kind of ideal. And I think I can make some cuts here. And we're probably going to start with these guys here who I kind of, I didn't really think they'd get all the way through. But uh, yeah, so Mikey from My Chemical Romance, even though this is a, you know, a really nice sculpted and painted little figure, he looks great. He's going to go. Um, the Glitter Gold Godzilla and the Mogira, they're going to go. Now, I think the Skeleton Godzilla would have a better chance if I hadn't got this same figure right around the same time. Because it does kind of like this guy is so much bigger and cooler um, than this guy. But I don't know. He's, he is pretty great. Uh, let me see. So Superman... Justice, Tila, Namorita, Goblin Queen, Tombstone, Jack o Lantern, Hallow's Eve, Chris Star, Power Princess, uh, Ripper, Clutch, Swarm Tracer. You know what? I know we've got so many more G.I. Joes coming later this year. I think I am going to eliminate both Ripper and Clutch. Ripper has always been a character that I really liked. And I think maybe I'm, it's just not fair to him that he came out late last year. But yeah, it's just the fact that he was on so many lists last year that just makes me think maybe he should have qualified as a 2023 figure. It sucks that I got him a little bit later than everybody else. But uh, oh, and down goes the void. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, you know, Clutch is a nice figure. I don't need all the bells and whistles. Just a classic soldier like this is makes for a really nice figure. And the fact that he comes with the vamp Jeep uh, you know, is awesome, but, you know, I really need to be wowed by the character and clutch just is not that character that brings the wow for me. So I think I'm going to let him go, which I believe brings me down to 17 figures, which I could just carry on and let all these guys through, but I think I can do a little bit more. So it's kind of a tough cut, but I think the Swarm Tracer is going to go. It is a really nice figure, but as I mentioned earlier, I have bought this figure in three or four different colors previously. You know, the fact that they came with the alternate heads is great. But uh, yeah, it's hard to compete with something that's like a brand new sculpt like this. You know, characters that have never had action figures before. You know, it's just uh, this is a little bit more of the same. You know, it's a really nice repaint, but a repaint is what it is. And as much as I really love this little Superman, uh, the fact that this version here is an evil version of Superman, I think if this figure was ever going to advance, it probably should have done it the first time I got it in the classic Superman outfit. So yeah, this guy here, I think I'm going to eliminate him as well. So I believe that brings me down to my final 15. If there was maybe one more that was going to go, I was considering cutting the void just because I don't really know much about the character. But he is just really neat looking and he's so different from everything else in my collection. I think he should be allowed to live on and try and fight another day. Otherwise, Jack O' Lantern was never going to get eliminated. He was a lock. Angel, Destroya, Godzilla, Azahazar, all definite locks. Power Princess. It's just such a nice looking figure, even though I have no attachment to the character. Tombstone is kind of a pleasant surprise. Based on just the characters, these three figures and almost these four figures um, were pretty much destined to advance. Um, then the Godzilla, he's just super cool and he's cute. And then Tila, yeah, she... She's coming close, too, just because the style of figure is kind of simple. It's hard to compete against figures like this and like this. But I'll let her live to fight another day. And Hallow's Eve, again, I just like that she's a new character. Uh, I'm enjoying her in the current comic books, so it's, it's cool to have an action figure of her. So there you go. That is my top 15 of the first quarter of 2024. Okay, so there we go. 
those were my best of the first quarter of 2024. Hopefully that wasn't too painful. Uh, those of you that seem to enjoy this type of video seem to enjoy it. Those of you who don't, I totally understand that you wouldn't want to sit here and watch me do this. But uh, anyway, I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, I never have this stuff planned out before I sit down to do it, so that's why it kind of takes a while. I always know kind of the top contenders, uh, but a lot of times when I'm kind of, you know, really uh, humming and hawing over some of these figures, it's a tough decision because I'm deciding in real time, and I'll probably start regretting some of my eliminations uh, as soon as I finish editing this video. But uh, anyway, so stay tuned. There'll be another video three months from now when I do the second quarter. But uh, long before that, I'll be back with another video um, as I still have some figures to review. I've got some new G.I. Joes coming, uh, some Marvel Legends, Masters of the Universe. So stay tuned for all that stuff. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.